Okay, hello and welcome to this Java Bucket plugin development series. Um, this is going to be a series on uh, a series of tutorials on developing uh, plugins for the popular Minecraft server mod thingy, uh, Bucket. Um, so essentially what I'm going to be doing is going through a whole list of plugins and showing you how to make them. So this is actually sort of a redo of a previous series that I had, um, except, well, nothing wrong with the previous series, but um, there were quite a few changes to Bucket and essentially it just became outdated um, and honest, to be honest I thought I could sort of make it a bit simpler um, by splitting it up a bit differently so that's what we're going to be doing this time so anyway enough talking let's get on with what we're going to be doing in this video so what we're going to be doing is setting up the sort of development environment and just going over the basics of how to use Eclipse um, and that sort of thing um, and then in the next few videos we'll do things about events and all kinds of good stuff Okay, so the first thing we need to do is, well, I've probably just explained, I've just created this new folder here, I've called it Bucket Tutorials, and this is where we're going to be working for the entire series, and, well, obviously this is just to, to represent your plugin development folder, so you could call it whatever you like. Um, so anyway, the first thing we need to do is um, grab a copy of the Craft Bucket um, server, because we need to set up an actual server in this folder, so that we can, you know, use it for testing. So I'm just going to go to my internet browser, which I have here, and I'm just on this page here, which is the Craft Bucket um, Jenkins thingy. Um, so essentially, this is where they keep all of their uh, sort of development files and you know server Java files, whatever. Um, so what I'm going to do is download the dev bucket uh, Java file or Jar file. And the way I'm going to do that is just I'm just going to take the latest successful one. Um, it's probably a good idea to go to the recommended build when you go on this page. Um, and you can find that uh, down here. So you see where you, sat, you have latest promotion build, um, or recommended build. Um, that is the latest stable version. And the latest dev version is this link. Um, actually, I will click this one because that makes the most sense. So that just links to this page. And then you can download by clicking this link here, which is just the file name. And then I'm just going to click save, and we're not going to put it there. We're going to go back to my dev drive, and we're going to put it in Bucket Tutorials, which is where we're working. Instead of saving this as Bucket 1.1 R3, I'm just going to call this Bucket.jar. And this Java file here, this Bucket.jar, is um, not actually the uh, Bucket server. It's the uh, developer's file. Essentially, it just contains the API and not any of the server stuff. Um, so that means this is what you include in Eclipse, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But don't try and run this as the server, because that won't work. Anyway, as well as this uh, bucket.jar, we also need the craftbucket.jar, which is the actual server itself. So to get that, I'm going to go back to the server, this root page here, and I'm going to go to craftbucket, which is this one here. And then we're going to do the same thing. So recommended build, and then download it click save, we can save it in the same place, and again I'll just call this craftbucket.jar instead of with the version number as well. Um, the reason by the way that I'm saving them without the version number is that say there's an update and I want to replace these then I can just literally replace the file and Eclipse will link to that file still. Um, so it involves a bit less messing about when you update your plugins. Anyway, let's click save and wait for it to download or crash, okay there we go and downloading rather slowly, but never mind Okay, so that's all you need to do in the browser, so I won't close that because obviously it's still downloading. Uh, and I will put a link to this page um, in the description of the video, um, but it's pretty simple. It's just ci.bucket.org. Okay, oh, and if this page isn't available, by the way, just check out the forums, and there's usually um, like s somewhere there'll be a forum post with the download link provided and all that stuff. So essentially, that, you know, that's that. Okay, so now that we have our two files downloaded, I'm going to go back to our folder. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this Minecraft underscore server. And this is just going to be the folder that's going to contain our actual test server. Um, because obviously you don't want to test this on a production server or on a backup server or anything like that. Um, you can run the server on your local PC. Um, and all you need to do to do that is this craftbucket.jar. So I'm going to copy this into the server folder like so. Did that actually copy? Nope, no, it's doing it now. Again, really slowly. That's odd. Okay, well, never mind. I've clearly got something to fix later on. <laughs> okay, so once this is copied, you can execute this, and it will start up the server. 
However, you don't want to just run it like, like this, you want to run it via the terminal so that you can see any errors that appear. So I'm on Linux, so this might be slightly different for you, but there are probably tutorials around on it. And you know, if you're looking up plugin development tutorials, you probably know how to start a server. But I'll just show you for the sake of it. So what I'm going to do is create a new terminal, and that's this window here. So I'll just quickly resize this to be a little bit bigger. Won't do it perfectly because that'll take forever. And then I'm going to CD into this folder, which for me is media, no, shares, dev, bucket tutorials. And if I just list this folder, you can see there are the two files we downloaded, and now we have this Minecraft server folder. So I'll just CD into that, like so, and then there. So all we need is the um, actual craftbucket.jar. We don't need to download any of the other files that it will create, like the server.properties. So what I'm going to do now is just uh, enter the command to start up the server, which is Java. And then you want dash server and dash jar, I believe, and then craftbucket.jar. Hit enter, and we should see hopefully no errors. Yep, there you go. So now the server, ser server, the server is starting up, and it's generating all the various worlds, which might take a little while depending on your PC. Um, if you do it on a laptop, it will take ages. Um, and you can see here that it's just created the files, and actually you can see behind in the window, which I'll just go to while it's doing that, it's created all these files here. So these are the standard files, you know, in the server. So essentially, we're going to be using this just as our testing environment. So what we're doing in a moment is just go through a few configuration changes um, and just make sure that it has, okay, it's finished. Um, and now it's generated the worlds and all that stuff. We can just turn it off by entering stop and hit enter, and that will stop the server and save all the chunks. So what we'll do now is go back to our folder and we'll just make a few changes to the config files. Let's just make sure it has in fact saved them all. Uh, nope, that's taking forever. Oh, there it goes. Oh, it's probably something over a network drive, well, whatever. Okay, so let's go back to our folder, and we will open up the server uh, properties file, which is this one here, and we'll display it, and we'll make it smaller so you can see, and just make this ever so slightly bigger. And all we're going to do is change online mode, wherever that is, here, to false, like so. Uh, and the re all that does is make it so that when you log into the server, or when anyone logs into the server, it um, it doesn't validate their uh, you know login credentials with the Minecraft.net uh, servers, um, and that's just I mean really that's not really something you necessarily need to do, but I tend to do most of my plugin development when the Minecraft.net servers go down, so that means I can't play Minecraft to distract myself, and then I do all my plugin work. Um, so yeah, that's generally why I do that, and also it's a little bit quicker to log in if you've got a bad internet connection. Um, and everything else can stay as it is. Um, if you want to make it a bit quicker to start up, say if you are working on a laptop, you can set allow nether to false and then delete the nether world, and that'll be ever so slightly quicker. Um, okay, so yeah, that's basically that. So let's close, actually I won't close that because I'll need to keep it the same size. So then let's go to our ops.txt, and I'm just going to add my Minecraft username to this so that we can do things in the server for testing, you know, ch ch uh, change the time of day, that sort of thing. And that is pretty much that. Um, it might also be sensible to make it whitelisted, but I'm not going to bother with that because, well, I don't need to, it's only me on this network, so yeah. Okay, so that's that done. So now let's go back up to our tutorials folder and we'll start up Eclipse and set up our first project. Okay, so I've just clicked on Launch Eclipse and this is the first window that you'll see. Um, it asks you to select a workspace. So essentially the workspace is this Bucket Tutorials folder. So I'm just going to click Browse, and we're going to browse for that folder. So it's in my dev drive, and then it's in Bucket Tutorials. Well, it's not in it, it is it. So I'm just going to hit OK, and that goes like that. So then we can click OK again, and then we'll get, eventually, this fairly weird looking window here. Uh, if I can just resize it, there we go. Uh, so this is essentially our Eclipse. Um, and what you need to do is close this welcome thing, which it took me forever to work out how to do this for the first time, so don't feel bad if you didn't spot the cross straight away. Anyway, just click that, and then you get a fairly normal looking environment. So then you uh, you can also close these two panels, because they don't really that, you know, they're not really that important. So I just close tasks and outline. And now it's the sort of simple text editor style thing that we all know and love.
So I'll just realign these windows ever so slightly. That'll do. Ish. Yeah. Anyway, so you want, the first thing you want to do once you've started up Eclipse is create a new project. So the way to do that is to right click in this left bar thingy here, go to new project. And we want to create a new Java project. So just click that and click next. And then you get this window of information, which you can't really see. Um, so let's just make this a little bit smaller. Okay, so all you need to do really is enter a name for your project. So the first plugin we're going to be creating, which will be in the next series, mini series, whatever, is going to be called TNT Notifier. Okay, because that's a good example of events. So I'm going to create that as my project, and I'm going to click Next. Then we need to include the bucket.jar file so that Eclipse knows all about the bucket API. And the way we do that is by going to the Libraries tab here, and then adding an external jar. And then you want to go to the folder where you saved it, which is here, and add the bucket.jar. So just hit OK, and that's that done. So we just need to click Finish. And it, you might get this message, but just click No. Essentially, it's asking if you asking you if it wants to open sort of a workspace layout that's associated with the Java project. Um, and I don't, so I'm going to click No. Feel free to click Yes and try it out if you want. Okay. So now that we have our basic folder created, and we have our bucket.jar included, and we have a source folder created, all done automatically, by the way. Well, obviously, you just saw that. What we're going to do is create a new package inside of this source folder, which is going to contain all of our code, our Java class files and all that stuff. So we're going to right-click on the source folder, go to New, and go to Package. And we're going to call this... OK, the convention for this is you take a domain name that you own and reverse it. So for me, I own this. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to set it the other way around, and then I'm going to append bucket, because bucket dot that domain name is where I keep all of my bucket projects, or it's where I used to. Um, and then I'm going to add on the end the name of the project as well, which is like so. Uh, if you don't have a domain name, uh, sorry, if you don't have a domain name, um, the convention is to use me dot your username. So for example, I could do uh, Nope. This. Uh, yeah. Um, so just don't worry about that too much. Um, I'm going to set that back to what I used to have because that's what I always do. Um, Buckets. Notifier. No tire. Notifier. Is that right? Hmm, don't know. Hopefully. <laughs> okay. So once you've uh, set up your package, you just click finish, or once you've decided on a name, you just click finish, and that is basically that. So inside of here, you're going to do all of your code, basically, and this is that's where I'm going to leave this part, uh, this video even, and in the future videos where we're creating actual projects, this is going to be basically our starting point, so where we are now. Um, so yeah, that's basically it, so thank you for watching, and yeah, that's it.